I just got back from NAB where I was carrying this, the DJI Ronin 4D for the entire week. And you know what, my back is pretty tired. So you know what, today we're gonna take a look at a camera that is a little bit more manageable. Now I know what you may be thinking, Michael, is that some new webcam thing? No, it's not. It's a new action cam from Fiotech currently on Kickstarter for a couple more days, depending on when this video goes out, maybe maybe over with. But this is for their brand new Pocket 3. Now, before we talk about what is new and awesome and great about the Pocket 3, I actually wanna take a look at their first version. Uh, it's got a three axis gimbal, a little screen on it. You can record up to 4K 60, couple slow-mo options. It's a very simple camera. You got a couple follow modes and nothing really complex about it. But I'll be honest, cameras like this nowadays are becoming really hard to almost justify because smartphone cameras have gotten so good, not only with their image quality, larger sensors, better optics, but also the improved optical and digital stability. But for the past year or two, Fiotech has been on a very smart path to solving that kind of gap or problem of why you may even want one of these in the first place. So then you have the Pocket 2, which was just kind of a bump up from this one. And then the 2S introduced kind of the next iteration of what their thought was. This allowed you to take the gimbal head off and you had a decently long cable attached to it. So you could have the body of the camera, you know, separate from where you put the gimbal head in more creative spots. So when they reached out about Pocket 3, took a look at it and I thought, yes, I think it's time to do an updated video because now they have done the same thing where you have this nice, neat little handheld device, but look, it fully detaches. And now you have two independent devices that work seamlessly together, but gives you all the benefits of not having a cable. So both the gimbal and the remote control have their own internal batteries, of course. And what's nice is again, they seamlessly connect. So I've turned both of them on and now we can see the preview of what this camera is seeing. And we can use the joystick to control the gimbal. Now, before we get into the party tricks of this camera, first let's talk about image quality. While it seems to be a very similar sensor to some of the previous generations, it's a 12 megapixel, basically one and a quarter inch sensor. That's gonna allow you to record up to 4K 60 with a couple different slow motion options, both in 1080p and 720. If you do plan on doing 4K 60, make sure that you have a fast enough micro SD card or else it's gonna give you the message that I got on the first card I put in. It advertises a wide dynamic range mode and of course you can set it to auto exposure or dial in your own pro settings with shutter speed, ISO, it also does have internal mics, as I mentioned. How good they sound and how do they compare to something like my iPhone? Well, riding this bike uh, with all these different action angles and stuff makes me feel like I'm in the X Games or something. And you know, I could totally insert myself into the X Games thanks to today's sponsor, and that is Storyblocks. Storyblocks is your one-stop shop for all of your video assets, whether you need music, video templates, graphics, or if you're like me and you just want the occasional B-roll to insert into your videos to make them that much better, the assets you'll find on Storyblocks are extremely high quality, shot by some incredible cinematographers, filmmakers, and photographers, allowing you to very easily blend them into your own videos. They have licensing structures that work for anyone, whether you are a solo creator like moi, or a video production company, or you need commercial rights, or anything like that. If you want to learn more about Storyblocks, make sure you check them out using my link in the description below. And thanks to Storyblocks for sponsoring this video. wonder how the internal audio of this thing is. Do you want the dentist game? you want to build the cake? Pizza? So while they may not compare to professional audio, in a pinch, they're not half bad. Now besides just using the remote control, you can also control the gimbal via the Fiu Cam app on your phone. Of course, it gives you access to all the same settings and controls as the remote one, but it also gives you the ability to wirelessly download the footage from the SD card on here uh, via a personal Wi-Fi hotspot it creates to your phones, then you can immediately upload it to social media, edit it on your phone, all that good stuff. So really, you can have an entire workflow 
with this straight to your phone without ever having to interface with a computer. And one of the smartest things they did on the bottom of this is magnetize it. So in addition to a little tripod, it comes with this right here, which simply just has a magnetic plate right there, a quarter 20 on the bottom. And then I don't know what you call it, but this little like NATO rail looking thing is for uh, various different like GoPro attachments. But having a design like this allows this camera to become sort of a specialty action or just specialty camera sort of thing. Because you can stick this in so many places that you couldn't or wouldn't want to stick your phone. One of the things I even like is if you just take that magnet, put it on the inside of your shirt, put this on the outside. Now you have a chest cam and you can get cool like POV style shots. I want like a pirate shoulder mount. I just thought of this one. I don't even know if this will work. Shoulder mounted camera. <laughs> so this would be kind of cool. If I'm like on a shoot or something and I want like a behind the scenes, like I'm, <laughs> This is literally an OTS, which normally stands for over the shoulder camera shot, but this is more like on the shoulder camera shot. Like this is perfect for BTS and content creators. I just realized that when you see this angle, you're gonna see how messy my studio is. <laughs> I haven't had a chance to clean since I've been back, okay? Now, since you also have the quarter 20 on the bottom, I created this little contraption. And so I wanted to test how strong this magnet actually is by attaching this to my new bike and going around to do a bunch of different test shots. Now, all these shots are at 4K24 because again, the first memory card I put in wasn't fast enough to 4K60 and personally, I like 4K24. But what normally would be a multi-crew, multi-step, multi-rigging and multi-hour process to get a bunch of different shots on this bike literally took a couple seconds in between each shot. It was all about just clamping this to the spot of the bike that I wanted because the bike isn't magnetic and then using the remote to view and adjust the gimbal for the exact placement that I wanted. Angles that you don't really get to see. I was very nervous going over this bridge because it has some like anti-grip things that just what well, you're probably not gonna see in the footage because it's so smooth, but in reality, it's one of those like duh, 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 like the bridge was very bumpy. That was kind of test number one, passed with flying colors, but then came this hill right before this little kind of underbridge, and there were some pretty intense bumps. And both having the camera mounted where it was straight up like this, as well as upside down like this, it never fell off. So that gave me a lot more hope to test it out on a car. All right, first we're just gonna try an easy shot. Just kinda dead center on the roof there. Let's see what that looks like. Without needing any transmitters or anything, we can literally control the gimbal, center it up a bit. I hear the beep and I see the recording. All right. Looks like we survived no problem. Oh, right on the license plate. Is that magnetic? Not magnetic. Let's see if we can view like me driving maybe. Digitally zoom in a bit. going for one of the dramatic angles now. Probably one of the ones I'm most nervous for, to be honest. If I could have one critique or wish for the next iteration of the Pocket 3, Pocket 4, whatever, would be to have some roll access so that we can kind of fix our horizon lines. Because when I mount it sideways like this, there's no way for me basically not to have a Dutch angle. So everything is, is borderline like portrait. Obviously I'll have to see when I get back home in terms of the quality of the footage, but in terms of its mounting ability and ability to stay on even through pretty intense bumps, you know, I'm not saying this is gonna survive a rally car race or something, but for normal daily driving, like going on the road, good old potholes and speed bumps. 
I mean, it's still on there and it's still doing very well. And so, so much comfortable that I'm driving home with it on. Now, even if you're not the action camera type of person, just using this around the house, you'll find so many creative spots that you never even thought of putting a camera. No, not, not like that. I mean, with smart tracking features, gestures to enable recording, this is one of those nifty little cameras that really allows you to be a one-man band while still being ultra creative. I'd love to hear your thoughts down in the comments below what you think about the Pocket 3. If you wanna learn more about it, check it out in the link in the description below. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video.